I was so excited to get the child. I don't know why. It was just intriguing. I got him fairly cheap, around $20. So I took him out of the box. I wanted to check it, check out what I got here. He sits down fine, but guess what? No feet! In his arms! No bones! Nobody puts Baby Yoda in the corner. Mattel, what were you doing? I'm gonna take Baby Yoda and give him some upgrades. Some feet and some structure that so he can actually put his arms around and make him what he deserves to be. Interested? Here we go. Come up with this idea of taking these dowels and here you can see they're all glued in and the dowels kind of like are his toes. Equivalent of that on his feet. And I measured that out to be about, or 50 millimeters. Using some Super Sculpey and some wire, kind of crafting the foot. So you come in here like this. This foot here and this foot here. And they'll be just barely covered by his coat. Now this next part's probably going to be a little nervous for some. Originally I was going to come in here and kind of slip this back piece. And then I realized that he's connected with cable ties on his wrists and his head. So we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna release the cable ties so that we can work on the rest of the structure. This is what I'm thinking about the inside. So I've got a half inch PVC T and I've used a heat gun and expanded it so I can put these plugs, they're about three quarter of an inch long, in here on both ends and then I'm going to run some of this green coated wire through to his hands and to his legs coming through here. Then I'll connect the legs like this and then run it through the bottom of his thing here. Here and you can see that I've drilled the holes and put the dowels in there. That will give me something to build the clay on. Try to put the right toes in the right place. I tried doing the drilling of the holes after I cut the dowel, but this is what happened. And then I want to make a hole at the top to run the wire in. So I'm trying it this way. I think this is a little better way to do it. And then I'm just going to take a hacksaw and cut it off right around that line. Maybe a little lower than that to make sure I don't encroach that area. And I have, I have a little bit of wood on the end. I find Super Sculpey works best on wood when you've wired it up. So I've taken some of this painted paddle wire, thin floral wire, I've drilled some holes, and I've just wrapped it around all the places I'm going to put some clay. I find it works best by just kind of rolling what I call little snakes, and then just kind of pushing it in place against the wire. And you have to be patient with this stuff. But it's patient with you. It's not like some clays. It stays soft. I mean, I've had this for over a year. I've made a whole bunch of wands. I'll post a link to the wands that I've made up here using Super Sculpey. You just kind of get it to where you want it and you bake it. Some clays don't require baking, but they set up really fast. And if you're not done within an hour, <laughs> you're done one way or the other. I want to take a little extra time, so that's just why I'm using Super Sculpey. Cut off a slab here, work it into where I want it to be. Okay, made some progress. Here is the legs. It's got little nails and everything. I did make him a little control knob. I took a one and a half inch wooden doll head, cut a groove with a file, and then I made it so that I can put a super magnet in right here, or a magnet, doesn't have to be a super magnet. And then I filed a hole of the hand and slipped in a super magnet there. You can hear it rattle around. So that after I get done with this guy, he'll be able to hold on to it that way. So it'll be like this. Groove down with a Dremel tool, cut down, tape that off. I'm going to hit this with black paint first and then a silver paint. These guys I'm going to bake in the oven. 
and then they're going to come out and then I'll paint them up. Now we're going to bake his feet in the oven at 275 for 25 minutes. Don't want to overcook them. We're going to take them over here and they're still hot to the touch. They're probably pretty close to 275. So they'll still cook while they're here on the counter. We're into the painting phase. I'm taking Everglade and white paint, kind of blending it together. I've tried a whole bunch of different things and this seems to be the best match. It's a little darker. It's probably going to dry a little lighter. This is what the original clay looked like. This is one coat and this is two coats. I checked with the fam and they want to get it a little bit dirty and we're going to make his nails this coffee latte which is fairly close okay it's ketchup time so you can see that the feet are done from a painting perspective originally they looked a lot like this i wanted to dirty them up a little bit like he'd been walking around barefoot which i think he does i don't think he pretty sure he doesn't have shoes the nails came out really well there's the bottom of the feet and i've got them on sticks so that i can spray them and what i did here to kind of get the details of the lines and is I just took some burnt sienna got this little egg container and really thinned out the paint dabbed it on with a paintbrush and then just you could see I could just wiped it off let it dry overnight and now we're gonna coat this guy up with just a clear mat don't want too much of a shine this is kind of a matte finish here. By the way, I went and tried to do the burnt sienna on this and the plastic just wouldn't take. So then the concern was you could rough this up and maybe it would take, but then, yeah, you're just getting into a gray area that may or may look good or may look like junk. So I think I'm just gonna leave this that way and know the fact that this is the future. And if I get a little real gutsy and this has a good successful video, maybe, and I get comments in, below that I should do this I'll take it to the next level and dirty the child up here is the control knob I've painted it black I was trying to figure out how I would retain the black line so all I did is I took a thin rubber band and put that in the channel now on the silver paint to say that I have a lot of metallic paints is not an overstatement and I have a bunch of acrylic versions that I could use and I even thought about rub and buff but this is actually the one I used on my wooden sword video I've used this guy on my Han Solo blaster before and then I used this on my men in black gun so I'm looking for a shine like that by the way if you're interested in any of those other builds I'll post links here and down below so I think I'm gonna go back to this but any of these would work this is a lot more expensive I can get it at Michael's for half price and get it around the same price as these, three to four dollars. So now it's time to go outside and paint these up. Really happy with this, the control knob. I took some blue electrical tape and just traced and cut it out over the super magnet. And then I took a blue marker, make sure that the tip was really sharp. And I went down through the channel and made that blue. Here are the legs. I like the matte finish. It's just shiny enough without being a little too much, and that locks in the paint. And this guy, I put super magnets in, and I wanted to show you how I did that. I just made a slot, and then I just pushed it in like this. There's actually two super magnets in there, the smaller version. And then that allows me to get the ball to do the magic force thing. Now, originally I was only going to do this hand and then I saw the Mandalorian where he catches it in this hand. So I had to do this hand too. On the Sideshow version, you can actually see the magnet and I didn't want to have the magnet seen. But the other great thing is he, he can catch it almost anywhere. He can, the tip of his fingers, he can catch it on the back. So he can truly use the force to catch the control knob virtually anywhere. All right, now here's the arms and legs. This is just the clothesline wire that you can get almost anywhere. I Use some cable ties. I put, ran some holes and put some cable ties in there to kind of lock it in place because I didn't want it to float from side to side. 
On this one, I was worried about puncturing the bottom here. So I actually made a bigger hole so I could slide that cable tie in there. And then the other thing I did is instead of gluing, I screwed these in place and I gave a pivot point so that he can twist his torso. And I'm going to make it so that he can actually sit down like this by bending the wires. And if you want to know how to make this slot, I'll post in a video up here or here or down there a how to on how to make pivots for PVC and hinges. I've done that on my posable frame and I'll post connections to that so you can see how I built that. It's just a large version of this. So now it's just a matter of putting them together. Got his feet. We've run the wires through there. The frame is on the inside. All of these pieces are fit on with cable ties and there's little notches on where to put the cable ties and the little sections here. You can see where the old cable tie was. So it's pretty easy to put them back together. So I'm going to put his head on. Make sure that the feet are right. Real happy with how the feet turned out. And that allows him to sit and do different poses. And then the arms will allow him to do the magic hand and things like that. Okay, so his head and his arm are on. I wanted to point out something. You can see that all of the, the hands and the head have this channel on it. There's a lot of room in play. Why am I telling you that? Well, because when I got Baby Yoda, or the child here, it was cinched down hard, and you couldn't move his arms or his head. I've got it so it's just the right amount of play, and you can swivel his arms, but more importantly, you can swivel his head. Now, I understand completely why Mattel really lock down on these cable ties. They want it coming apart as kids really kind of test Baby Yoda out, drag him around, throw him around, whatever. But we're going to be a little more gentle with Baby Yoda, or Grogu, or the child, or whatever you want to call him. And I'd like to have the ability to move his hands when I'm posing him. And especially his head. Makes him a lot more <laughs> live for a fake character. <laughs> Just wanted to point that out in case you want to do something like this yourself. And then you just slide this guy on here like this. And I made sure that it, you can see that I have it going in far so that I have a lot of room to play with it. And I'm not gluing it in place. And I think that it gives me a little more flexibility in manipulating his arm and putting it in different positions. You just put it together and give it just the right amount of tightness. See? And then I just take one of these cutters that go real flush and boom and of course he has to have his control knob <laughs> let's finish him up and some final thoughts so here he is standing in his glory as opposed to just being a weevil or a wobble and just falling down i measured him he's 14 inches tall as opposed to the original 11 inches his arms are posable. You can move his head. I got him the little knob that's that he can hold on to with either hand, by, by the way. No other Yoda does that. He can pose his hands up pretty easily. And you can turn his head. All things I wanted to do and I was able to accomplish. And he can also sit. There you go. Hands off. He's sitting. You got feet. What more could you want from Baby Yoda? This was a fun project. It didn't take much time after I figured out what I was going to do. And it just really came together. Now, I got to ask you the next question. Should I dirty him up? Should I make him more realistic? That would be the next step. You know, kind of weather his coat. I could make him his hands and his face more like his feet so comments below if you want me to take him to the next step thumbs up and comments are always appreciated thanks for watching if you're interested in cosplay prop builds making and breaking things designs of all kinds check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see